Let's start. Let's start taking notes. NKVD. Stalin's Secret Service, which assassinated. We'll just say uh, idea, or it was part of the Great Purge. At least 1.3 million people were arrested and 681,692 people were executed for crimes against the state. This was very much the, I don't like Stalin, you're getting taken away and we're going to kill you and we're going to kill your family and you're going to kill, like everything is going to die. Your dog's going to die if you even have a dog. I don't even know if you can have dogs in the Soviet Union. This, that's kind of like what this is to my under, that's my understanding of what this was, right? Also, I accidentally refreshed chat. What are you guys saying? I can't read. I, all I can read, this is how I read chat. No, it's PogChamp. What does how many people died? Yeah, but the people that stolen, starved, and killed were by his own regime, not because of coming. Yeah, okay, so <clears throat> the idea there is that like the distinction is not one that the right is willing to make often. And I mean, myself as well, right? Um, for all the faults that Stalin had, he was a socialist. Uh I <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's really cringy to say that, but he was a socialist. His regime was socialist. Um you can call it Stalinism. This was a socialist regime. This was a very, very, very cancerous socialist regime. Not one that I would look towards replicating in the near future, in any future, but this was a socialist regime. Why this was a socialist regime, this is important to consider. This was a totalitarian regime, okay? Stalin, uh, Stalin on many different occasions promised the betterment of mankind under, uh, his, uh, under his legislation. Uh, the famine, right? That was a targeted act. Let's look at it. Famine of 1932. I looked into this shit. What is this? Is the gulags or no? This wasn't the gulags. This has nothing to do with the gulags. I don't think. The kulaks. Stalin and other party members had ordered that kulaks were to be liquidated as a class, and so they became a target for the state. The richer, land-owning peasants were labeled kulaks and were portrayed as the uh, by the Bolsheviks as class enemies, uh, which culminated. This was a class war that was propagated by Stalin. Now, again, to say this was like, uh, like, like. Like, Marx killed these people. This was Marx's regime. I think that's incredibly disingenuous, but this was still a socialist regime that allowed this to happen, so to speak. Um, right? Um, I don't want to say they're one and the same, but they're certainly connected, right? And jo Joseph Stalin himself, right? A lot of the power that was awarded to him was through the means of uh, um, socialist ideals, right? Uh, he advocated for the rights of the worker he advocated for the rights of every individual he was seen as an everyman he abused the uh cult of personality i've looked this up several times on screen before this this term came about because of stalin because of the insane propaganda and mass media campaigns that he'd run to propagate his own public image this has never been done before ever i don't think right uh I think news publications were unanimously in support of Stalin. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine Fox News, CNN, Breitbart, Daily Caller, Daily Wire, uh, Vox, Vice, uh, ABC News, MSNBC, all unanimously sucking Trump off? Just like, could you imagine that? That would be insane, especially if it was mandated by the president or leader, whatever the fuck. This, this was socialism. Uh, not the best <laughs> version of it by any means of uh, by any definition certainly but this is uh one consequence of having way too much power to uh, awarded towards the state and again that, i'm a democratic so i'm saying that as a democratic socialist right this was not good and it happened but to say this is Marx, like, this is not on Marx. Come, like, come the fuck, this, that's disingenuous as shit. To say this body count is on Marx, adds some, <laughs> like, are you serious right now? Or Mao? Like, are we being fucking serious right now? Are we actually being serious right now? What, the People's Republic of China, who is this again? This is all Mao, right? Famine. R.J. Rummel originally estimated China's body count between uh, the years of, so about 40 year span was 35 million. This excluded 38 million that died during the famine of the Great Leap Forward after the release of Mao, the unknown story. I don't know much about Mao, but I don't think this guy was a Marxist. Ideologically, a Marxist, his theories, military strategy, and politically, uh, political, political policies are collectively known as Maoism. Uh, he later adopted Marxism, Marxism, Marx, like, so he's an MLer, right? This is not a true Marxist, just to be clear. Uh, Lenin is often, like, paraded as one of the individuals that interpreted Marx 
rather charitably. I take issue with that myself, as I understand Leninism being uh, something that can certainly be separated from Marxism. But I, again, this was called Maoism. I, mm, I don't know. I'd like to know Paul's opinions on this or Captain Pancake because they're a little bit more well versed with this literature. But fuck me if I'm going to sit here and call this uh, like Mao a Marxist. That is fucking stretch, dude. Stalin or Hitler or Mao would have used any system to care. That's okay. Also a great point, And I'm glad you're saying this right now, Jake. So I don't know if you're necessarily trying to hint at horseshoe theory. Uh, we could even throw horseshoe theory to the, to the wayside uh, for a little bit because I think horseshoe theory is more concerned with like fuck oh my fucking god all right i can't type when i'm on stream i type way better as weird as this sounds on the other browser when like you guys aren't looking just because i don't have that pressure right um in political science and popular discourse the horseshoe theory asserts that the far left and the far right uh rather than being at opposite and opposing ends of a linear political continuum uh closely resemble one another much like the ends of a horseshoe i even disagree with this you can have far left regimes that are not like well, and this doesn't necessarily speak one way or to, uh, one way or another whether or not fascism or communism regimes are necessarily crazy, like crazy as in um, toxic or cancerous. However, I am of the ilk personally that um, fascism necessitates violence. That's that's my opinion. Argue argue me on that if you want. Come in debate debate me right debate me right now. Anybody anybody that doesn't think that fascism necessitates violence, come debate me right now. I'll debate you on that shit. I don't personally. I don't see a way in which fascism can be carried out without I, that peaceful ethnic cleansing shit. I don't think that's going to happen because at some point fascism always turns into over, over to imperialism. Uh, there's no. I have never seen it put into place where people are where fascists are willing to put people into small boxes and not start killing them once they want those small boxes, right? Where fascists don't segregate society and then eventually say, "Hey, you know that like side of society that we segregated ourselves from? We want that land now." It generally happens. I don't even know what fascism means. I got you, man. Hey, it's a learning stream. Everybody's welcome here. Everybody, it's a learning stream. I said that myself. I've recognized that I am definitely not the most intelligent or politically savvy person on on, on Twitch. So I'm treating this just like just like I treated Dota, right? In Dota, when I when I calibrated at 3K, I was dumb as fuck about the game, and I embraced it. I went into games and I was asking people who I should pick and what items I should buy. I embraced it. This is a political learning stream. I'm a 3K I'm a 3K political memer on the left. Uh, 3K left leaning spammer, by the way, XD. And I'm learning. So you're learning with me, okay? This is what fascism is is a form of far-right authoritarian ultra-nationalism characterized by dictatorial power forcible suppression and opposition or forcible suppression of opposition and strong re strong regimentation of society and of the economy uh, economy which came to prominence in the early 20th century of europe now it is important to recognize the nazis were not the end-all be-all fascists they were just one of the most prominent figures in 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 fascists did you change the title i did not trans rights oh shit Hey, can somebody be an editor? Jake, Detorcus, any of you guys think you like want to just change the title of the stream for me? I don't really care. It just like if you want to just type like I mean I'll type it now, but like I need somebody to do that for me because I feel like I do a I would editor, but I'm never yeah, I know. I just anybody that feels comfortable like making stream titles, because I I make this mistake way too often on my mobile. I would edit over yeah, I'm on here, I'm here on occasion. It's just I'll change it right now. Talking political ideologies their extremes body counts right now i'm on a tablet but i could do it generally i read michael no's book reasons to vote for democrat really interesting i have not read the book i don't really <laughs> i don't really read books okay if i'm gonna be honest with you dude i'm more i'm a i'm a fan of articles i i can't sit down i've i've developed this is my uh this is my movement okay all right this is my educational movement i am against i'm against books okay burn them all put put them all online and then burn them all and then also watch as nobody floods to them online fuck books it's too much information from one source okay why would I read a 120 page novel when I could just read one page of the book that you can, oh, sorry, I'm just fucking around. If you can summarize your positions in one or two articles, I don't, I'm not interested. Okay. This, this is, that's why I like Wikipedia. Okay. Even if I'm getting all my information from one source, I can guarantee, I can guarantee that it's all a verifiable B written by other, by multiple different corroborators and C corroborated to be as factual as possible. I unironically have that issue with books. I, yeah, I think it's a legit. I, I think there's too much of a like circle jerk around books, right? Especially growing up in schools, like you were taught, like Wikipedia is bad, books are good, cite books, read books. Ah, fuck that. I want, I want my information from multiple sources. I'm sorry. 
maybe I'm steel manning that position too much and not giving enough books enough credence, but like fuck books, honestly. <laughs> I don't read that shit, okay? I know that sounds really ignorant, but like that's this is where I get my information from, okay? I want more as many sources as possible. What if he's right about this thing in programming and right about wrong about this other thing? Exactly, my lad. That being said, I did read the Communist Manifesto and I have read other books as well. Okay. I'm not like I'm I'm kind of fuck books, but like if you want to read books, I'm not actually for birdie books. Go be go read books. I'm not against like all books or anything like that. I'm not a good against any books. It's just dude, people keep telling me to read books. I tell them I just can't compute. Just what you should tell them is like I read, but I don't read books. And pe and again, when when people try to stigmatize other forms of media, ask them why. Why why is Wikipedia bad? Why do you hate Wikipedia? Or, or I, because you guys, you guys actually think there's, I know that some people think if our pocket was here in chat right now, he'd be like, it's a left leaning source. So if, if it's not Wikipedia, start asking like, why is my source bad? Just because you like, I think there is a stigmatization of online media spaces. And I think that needs to die out because this is, I think this is like objectively the best way to receive information. I'm, I'm also pretty Papago. Okay. So maybe like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, the blind leading the blind here, but, uh, honestly, like what's wrong with learning about fascism without reading Mein Kampf, right? Like somebody could say, hey, Dan, uh, fuck, Wired. Hey, uh, there's this great book on fascism that you need to read. And I can't even spell fascism, so this is why you should read books, boys. There's this great book on fascism called The Anatomy of Fascism by Robert uh, O. Paxton, right? It's only 20 bucks from Barnes & Noble. Go pick, it, go pick it up. I'm like, first of all, I don't want to drive somewhere, okay? Oh, buy it on Amazon. First of all, or second of all, rather, um, I don't want to wait, right? When I want information, I want it on demand. That's the beauty of information is generally speaking, if you want information, it's pretty much always on demand. That's the one thing that separates it from like physical, um, physical features, generally speaking. Um, oh, but dude, uh, it's, it's a book like, uh, uh, you're getting a really accurate source or whatever. I can get accurate sources in online spaces too. Again, I'm not trying to stigmatize books here too much. I'm just like, like, come on, dude. I don't need to read a book by Robert O. Paxton to cor correctly analyze fascism. I think I can do that just fine. Thank you very much. Anyways, enough with the anti-book shit, because I'm, I'm really not anti-books. Let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. Okay, so this is what fascism is. It's a far, form of far-right-wing uh, authoritarian ultranationalism character. And Jake made the very, very good point. You can have a left-leaning fascist as well. I know it says for, form of a uh, far right, uh, far right-wing fascist. Uh, typically speaking, when we're referring to fascists um, in common nomenclature, we're referring to like people who are uber obsessed with like nationalism. Um, it's difficult to find that on the left, but it can exist. Um, maybe you'd say they're not like true leftism or lefts. Fascism is placed on the far right within the traditional left-right spectrum. It's a, it's a little bit of a meme. This is like the general breakdown, though. Opposed to liberalism, Marxism, and anarchism, fascism is a place on the right wing, uh, or right w uh, on the far right within the traditional left-right spectrum. Fascists saw World War I as a revolution that had brought massive changes to the, natu to the nature of war, society, the state, and technology. Um, we should... Oh, fuck, man. Where'd my notes go? So we got the NKVD, in, NKVD. Well, originally, we were trying to look up the body count on that. Do you, do you understand fascism yet, Wafflex? Or at least a, like a cursory understanding of it, uh, just so that you can have like a working definition moving forward. Again, this is a learning stream. Uh, this is a learning stream. I am not in any way, shape, or form trying to stigmatize anybody that's that feels dumb in chat. I feel dumb too. Uh, we're all dumb here. Let's learn together. Uh, we'll understand and interpret the world the best way possible. Why well, I need to do see, see, see something later on Dota related, so it's super off topic. Is I assume this has something to do with artifact. Oh no. Okay. Fascism is a right wing already wrong. Okay, I, so <laughs> again, I know this is a meme, right? Is like fascism is firmly rooted in the right wing. I, I this is gonna sound like a wing, uh, meme, um, and you could say they're not real leftists. Uh, left people, left leaning people can be a fascist too. I am, I am very far left, right? Uh, well, I'd consider myself rather far left. I said I'm socked them earlier. In actuality, socially, I'm very, very progressive. When it comes to um, economics, I'd say I'm like. Uh, I'm I'm a sock dem. I'm 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 pretty far left. Certainly, sock dem's far much further left than most left uh, left leaning individuals. But I do recognize uh, that uh, heavily regulated capitalism um, probably will stimulate the economy by and large in general. And I need to do more research on this. But by and large in general, the, the research that I have done, far, uh, regulate heavily regulated capitalism is probably better for the market than just like a truly socialist regime or especially like an anarchist anarchist regime. <clears throat> okay. With that being said, 
there can also be people on the very far left, especially when you're talking about in social spaces that can be very, very fasc fascistic, okay? As crazy as that sounds. What are we talking about? When we talk about left-leaning social spaces, typically speaking, and I know that this is gonna trigger some people, we're talking about identity politics. Agree, like it or not, that's generally speaking what we're talking about, right? If we're talking about people on the very far left that um, um, fight for like trans rights or uh, uh, fuck, we're, uh, or, or um, uh, trans rights like the big hop hop button issue too but we could talk about like civil rights like amongst uh, the races we can talk uh, uh, we can talk about like uh gender rights etc so, so forth gender expression gender identity um this is see typically seen as like you know if you're willing to dive into these topics and have nuanced conversations and especially advocate for these positions you're seen as like far left on the social spectrum however this is a fun fact did you know do you guys know what a turf is a turf is somebody who i would consider to be a fascist but on the very far left a trans exclusionary rad femme coined in 2008 the term is applied to a minority of rad femmes who espouse sentiments that other feminists consider trans uh transphobic such as opposition to trans or sorry who espouse sentiments that other feminists can consider transphobic such as opposition to gender rights the exclusion of trans women in women's spaces and the rejection of the assertion that trans women are women turfs generally speaking are feminists and advocate for very i don't want to say radical but very far left social change towards women's rights However, they are fascists. They dis they disenfranchise a group of people based off of not necessarily nationality. However, identity that is fascism. <sighs> okay, sorry. Far left and far right are often compared as they are extremes, extremist radicals. Yes, but fascist doesn't mean authoritarian. I'm not saying no. Once did I say authoritarian? Did I? And what I d in the description that I just gave of turfs? I don't think I said authoritarian whatsoever. Fascism typically has everything to do with authoritarianism, which is, which is the idea of nationality be, being preserved in a focus on the individual. It's a form of government characterized by strong central power and limited political freedoms. Under an authoritarian regime, individual freedoms are subordinate to the state, and there is no constitutional accountability. Oh, shit. Uh, authoritarian uh, regimes can be autocratic and power concentrated in one person and can be a committee. Um, I think I was a little bit wrong there. To my understanding, authoritarian the difference between authoritarian uh, author authoritarian regimes and totalitarian regimes is that the authoritarian regimes focus especially with centralizing power into one particular individual, in this case Hitler. However, totalitarian regimes, you know, see Stalin for an example of that, uh, of, of the same thing in reverse. However, especially authoritarian regimes seem to focus on um do uh on on the regime trying to propagate a certain group of people. So in the case of Hitler's authoritarian Nazi Germany, it was propagating the German people. How do you stand on utilitarian? This is a totally different discussion, my dude. We're not talking about philosophy. Well, we're talking about pol uh, political, like, I guess, political science or political theory. So maybe uh, I would say I'm like, I'm a, I'm a pretty conventional or like traditional utilitarian. Hold up. What are we saying? Fascism does not dis doesn't discriminate on ideology per se. That's not the core belief of fascism. Well, uh, great. Then we agree. Uh, again, like I don't necessarily think that you need to be a right leaning individual to be a fascist. Uh, it sounds like you and I don't agree. Don't disagree. You couldn't you say Antifa is fascist as well? Then, um, no, uh, definitely not. Strong central power, my dude. That's what you're looking for. Antifa is incredibly decentralized. That's one of the things you're looking for. I'm sorry. If you want to learn more about NKVD, you should watch Coma, Birthplace of Our Fear with subtitles. Sick. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. I will look it up right now. <laughs> fuck. Uh, maybe I won't. Jesus. You, fuck. Dude, why are you giving me movies? Come on, man. And what? It's all sensationalized, too, so I'm going to get a very colored opinion. I just want to learn about what they did and what their body count was. And especially how they discriminated against uh, the individuals that they that Stalin's regime killed in secrecy. I don't want a whole movie that like sensationalizes the victims because, like, firstly, I find that to be very tasteless. Secondly, it's not useful for informational purposes. Don't get me wrong; I can cry in my own time about like how hurricane victims get uh, marginalized, or sorry, how, about how hurricane relief victims get fucked. And maybe I do. He said, "Film. This is film. How is this? Wait, how is this not?" This is certainly a movie, right? Fascism zero, Nazism around 15 million. Wait, you don't think na Nazis were fascists? Oof. Give me one second. I want you to think about that while I use the restroom again because I'm a racehorse right now. One sec. Or clear that take up for me, buddy.
All right. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, lads. By fascism, I mean Italian fascism. Oh, I guess you cleared it up in the most. He pees like every 10 minutes. Uh, dude, <laughs> I'm drinking water, okay? And I'm talking a lot. So uh, I need energy through water, and then I need to speak because I'm streaming. So it's like, this is a system, okay? Also, maybe I have a fucked up bladder. I don't know. We're, we're dumbasses, remember, guys? We're dummies. So we can look this up and not get judged but for it, okay? Italian fascism. I've never heard of this before, unless you're talking about, like, uh, what's his name? Yeah, Mussolini linking with the Nazis. Is this the extent of Italian fascism? I would say that this is more like Mussolini than it was... Uh, well, whatever, never mind. Italian fascism was the authoritarian political movement which uh, ruled Italy from 1922 to 1943 under the leadership of M Mussolini, who was very, very much in bed with uh, Hitler. Again, it's like, it's weird to say, that, I mean, was this fascism? Yes. Uh, did this happen under Italian rule? It's like, kind of, I, it happened under Mussolini, who was very good friends with Hitler, who was like very much part of the three axes of power. I don't know. It's kind of a meme here, I think. The YouTube link I posted is on the roots of fascism being brought to the United States. You posted me a link that linked to a... V oh, I see. Ties to fascism? <laughs> what am I looking at? <clears throat> Look at this. It's amazing how Republicans are truly colorblind while blacks, Jews, Hispanics, gays, trans, and every other Democratic Party identity groups hates each other. Nice. Why are people thumbs downing this, trying to make uncomfortable reality go away? Demo KKK crats are fash KKK ists. I, uh, I don't know. I have to wonder if you're really giving me the roots of fascism being brought to the United States. I guess we'll watch this video in a second here, real, real quick. I want to learn more about this. All I know about Mussolini is what I learned in history class in like. 2009? 2008? <sighs> and a lot of that's fuzzy. So, German Nazism under Adolf Hitler was inspired by Italian fascism, but only came to power 10 years later in 1933. Similar movements appeared throughout. This is from New World Encyclopedia.org. We trust it. It's an encyclopedia. <clears throat> Similar movements appeared throughout the world, including Europe, Japan, and Latin America between World War I and World War II. Uh, history resident. Okay. I know this is gonna sound crazy, Jake. Hitler's actually hi, uh, Hitler. Fuck. History is actually pretty pog champ. Okay. I've been looking into this, especially when I started looking to the USSR. There's a lot of really interesting things about history. I don't know why my younger self didn't really appreciate it. There's a fuck ton of interesting things about history, especially if you follow the money, boys. There's a lot of incredibly interesting things uh, if you follow money. If you look at like where, I don't want to say where the money's going because that sounds really weird, but like. Look at movements. Look at where they get their money. Look at the names, okay? I'm getting really weird here. Okay, Rockefeller. That's that's one that you should keep an eye out for. I see him a lot, seemingly. Uh, I'm Italian. I can educate you. Ja, ja, ja. Nice meme. 1922 was be uh, before Hitler came to power? What do you mean? Is that in reference to this? Well, 1922 uh, to 1943. Under Hitler was on his rise. I think it was 1933 was when he was officially, yeah. 33 was when he was considered to have ended in, uh, Hitler's rise can be considered to have ended in March 30, 1933 after the Reichstag adopted the Enabling Act 1933 in that month. President Paul von Hindenburg had already appointed Hitler as chancellor. Also, it's kind of weird. They went from president to chancellor. And I mean, chancellor, like Chancellor Palpatine, like, like, uh, like the ruler. All I learned from history is that humanity doesn't learn from history. Yeah, there's some truth to that too. Yes, in 1933. But he was certainly on his rise for a while. <clears throat> Some say that he was on his rise even when he got sent to fucking prison, right? Rose to pre place of prominence in the early years of the party. Being one of its uh, best speakers, he told the uh, he told the other members to either make him leader of the party or he would never return. He was uh, aided in part of his in part by his willingness to use violence in advancing his political object objectives and to recruit party members who were willing to do the same. The beer hall push in November 1923 in the later release of his book ne Mein Kampf expanded hitler's audience in the late might yeah he was hitler <laughs> history is not important whoa that's a that's a boomer take
And then I just copied Star Wars. Nice, man. Yeah, he did a coup d'etat 10 years later. The only Rockefeller I know is Rockefeller Street. <laughs> um, fuck that then. Don't follow the money. J just, hey, Hitler's... Or, I, I keep saying Hitler when I mean history. Shit. History is a very interesting thing. And Hitler's a pretty interesting figure as well. Like, objectively. Uh, there's a lot of fucked up things associated with him, but I think you can learn a lot by like looking into him as an individual. By the way, Wired, I don't know if you still play Dota, but don't play any games for a while. Why? Because of the matchmaking system and you fucking hate it? Is that the meme? I was playing a few games. I, I kind of dig the new matchmaking system. No? Oh. It's the meta? The meta is shit? There's a serious problem. 1273 down to Rockefeller Street. 1273? Is this a song? This is actually a song. By Getter or whatever. There's a serious problem. I like new matching. I agree. I'm just kind of mean. <clears throat> what were we on? We were on Italian fascism. Uh, I, again, we should be taking notes. So Italian fascism. Um, ruled Italy from 1922 to 1943. Uh, Italian fascism. Uh, we'll type in Benito Mussolini because his name is important. Uh, was on the rise in 1922, but really spurred off when I think Hitler came to power. German Nazism under Adolf Hitler was inspired by not Italian fascism. Oh, interesting. But only came to power 10 years later in 1933. Yo, who's the homie in chat that said he was Italian? Ida Coop. What's, what's the story here? Was, was Benito? I thought Mussolini was taking after Hitler. I didn't think it was the other way around. What's the meme here? Did Mussolini influence Hitler to be like to take to his regime, his fucking regime at all? Like, was there any influence whatsoever in the in the direction that I didn't see coming? I guess if that makes sense. Similar movements appeared throughout the world, uh, including Europe, Jap Japan, and Latin America. Mussolini created fascism. I I'll never learn how to spell fascism. It's F A F A S C I S M. I ism. Mussolini founded the. Whew, I'll be fucking damn. Benito, what the heck? Why doesn't it say? Okay. At the outbreak of World War I in August 1914, the Italian political left became severely split over its position on the war. The Italian socialists, again guys, we're stupid here, so if I'm looking up stuff that may seem like, oh, come on, Wired, obviously this is the case, you should know this, you're, you're, the American education system truly failed us, and you're stupid, and blah, blah, blah. We're, we're learning here, okay? This is a learning stream, we're learning, we're researching, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling right. Mussolini made Hitler? I don't know, if, uh, yeah, maybe. Certainly, apparently, imposed. The Italian Socialist Party, PSI. Why PSI? Uh, shouldn't it be ISP? Or, uh, opposed the war, but a uh, number of Italian revolutionary syndical syndicalists supported war against Germany and Austria-Hungary on the grounds that their reactionary regimes had to be defeated to ensure the success. Now, hold up. I'm so confused now. Because they, they partied with them, right? In World War One, it was Germia, Germia, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and I think it was Italy as well. Bad guys. Or was Italy on our side? Damn, dude, we're we're learning today, boys. I am one dumb motherfucker. So basically, basically Italians caused World War Two. Don't jump to that. Ital Italy was both. Unlike in World War II, we, uh, where we all know Hitler and his friends were evil. They don't even really... This is some fucking random-ass message board. What, what the fuck is this shit? Paradox? Get the fuck out of here. Who are really the bad guys in World War I? I mean, fair enough. My switch was... Or my, uh, my search was shit. First, let me enlighten you. The history is written by the winners. I, of course. The World War I has, was won by the Allies. As a result, they wrote the history. Also, by the way, if you think America was the guy, good guys in World War II, fuck off. We were not the good guys. <laughs> we were part of the, the alliance, but we were certainly very, very late to the party. And that was deliberate. We were staying politically, uh, what would you call, uninvolved, I think is the meme. Um, up until Japan fucking washed up on our shorelines with bombs, okay? We were not the good guys. We were the uninvolved guys trying to mind our own business. And uh, that's what happens when you own your own business with the world affairs. That's why this stupid ass video on PragerU 
Is there a middle ground to be reached? Maybe, but this idea that should America be the world police? No, no, we shouldn't. We should just stay out of world politics and focus on our own world. It's not how this works, dude. As a result, I uh, justify their actions. I'm not saying that allies are the bad people. I'm just saying that they show Germans in a bad light. Uh, that's also true. And I, I, dude, I'm not trying to revise anything about history. If you think that uh, German, if you think the German people were like purely bad and evil to the core, and that Nazis were just bad uh, strain of bad bloodlines, you're horribly mistaken as well. Look up the Treaty of Versailles. Germany certainly got a very bad, um, bad deal out of World War One. Similar manner, the German newspapers showed the Allies in a bad manner. Newspapers, governmental uh, documentaries, and personal... I just want to find out the sides. I just want to know who fought what. Allies, United Kingdom and Britain, uh, French Republic, Kingdom of Italy was on our side, Sardom of Russia, Belgium, Serbia, Central... Po Wait, where are we? What the motherfuck? We fought in World War I. Real? <clears throat> why is this guy leaving out us the motherfuckers yes who here thinks Germans are bad <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this meme USA didn't exist back in 1914 what oh. am I getting like unironically sh fucking memed on hardcore you get anti-semitic looking you get anti-semitic looking at history it's unfortunate but they all they have they have had a major influence in a lot of prominent events. Uh, yeah, pretty sure there's something called the Jewish question, which Marx and a bunch of other thinkers have put their two cents in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm... We can't... We just don't even talk... That's not even worth talking about. Um, we can research that in our own times and come to our own conclusions. I personally don't think the Jews did anything wrong, but yes, I will say that unfortunately history does not paint Jews in a, bat, in a great light. 1776, you fucks? Wait. Okay. We definitely fought in the in World War One for the uh, the uh, the Allies. I don't understand why this person's like leaving us out. They probably detail it here. I don't have any time to read this, dude. We're we're moving. We're on the move, man. These are just facts that I need spat at me. So we fought in World War One. Italy was on our side. Uh, France, Russia, Britain, and we fought against Germany, Austria, Hungary, which was. Russia? Part of Russia? Obviously Hungary. But still a state. Oh fuck. My world my world map knowledge betraying me. This is Europe, right? Where is this? This is Northern Europe, I think. Right down here is Africa. Uh Middle East, maybe? Question mark? All of Russia? Am I wrong? Back to World War Champs, US. <laughs> Careful with TS yeah, you're certainly right. It, it, okay, yeah. Never mind, guys, we're not on the JQ. I'm I'm personally, again, I don't think the Jews did anything wrong. I don't think there's any reason to sit here and, like, act all maliciously. Okay, it's just the way that Hitler, uh, history fucking goes. Fuck me. It's okay, you're American. This is Austria-Hungary. Germany was, I think, close. I'm not, I'm not, I, my, my geography, my, it's a stupid stream, guys. We, we don't know that's why we're doing this thing, okay? We're learning, and that's the important thing here, guys. Uh, Ottoman and Ottoman Empire. That's uh, this was also like part of Russia before it got disbanded. Freud slip. I keep Freud slipping Hitler when I mean to say history, and it's it's not okay. Somebody just show me this on a world map. The Black Sea, Caspian Sea. This is Africa. Where's Ottoman Empire? Every state, everything that's colored is the Ottoman Empire. Damn, it was big. So it had like roots in Africa, but mostly was um. Middle East slash Europe, I think. Would you seriously get banned for saying that? It was a completely neutral statement in effect. See, the thing is that, like... Vosh got banned, okay? I don't know what Vosh got banned for specifically, like what words he said specifically, but he got banned for talking about this exact same thing. Was how Jews... Just questionable shit about Jews. So I don't want to get in trouble with that, okay? Again, I don't think Jews did anything wrong. I think history has painted them in a very poor light, and they've got a very, very raw end of, like, every deal they've been a part of. They were like the only, what, they were slaves, and then they were slaves again, and then they were like a, a, a marginalized people, or like persecuted people, and then, and then they were basically slaves. I, I don't it's like, I, they've never caught a break, Sir, except for in recent, I think, 1960s, when was Israel formed? 
the 1960s, I think, 48. No, fuck, I'm off. Uh, except for when Israel was formed. Then they got, I guess they've got it kind of cool now. Plus it's Twitch, they don't even know their own TOS. I mean, that's not something I should be like dicing with. I guess they are trigger words, my bad. No, you're good. One X is, you're one of the only people that I'm like looking to for information here. Also, Edie Coop. Hey, wh what's going on, guys? What? Who fought in World War One? We've got Austria-Hungary, Bulgaria, Ottoman Empire, Germany. These guys were fighting us. And then the Treaty of Versailles happened and like raped the German people. And I don't think that's even a trigger word to say. I didn't. Oh, you're good. The most important of the peace treaties that brought World War One to an end, the treaty ended the state of war between Germany. I don't know how Germans ever signed this either. It was signed on 28th of June. I think I think it was signed basically under the duress of if you don't sign this, we're blowing your fucking country to uh, smithereens. I'm not entirely sure. Exactly five. Oh, yeah, because it all started with this dude getting assassinated by the black hand, right? That's right. Archduke for arguably the most impactful assassination in history, right? A whole war was fought over this motherfucker. Tensions were rising, but I think this person, in fact... Proof the Twitch... Yo, chill. Chill with that shit. Guys, why are we stigmatizing Jews in my chat? <laughs> to be fair, everyone wanted to go uh, to go to work. You're right. Again, tensions were high at the time, but this guy, uh, this guy's death literally sparked a war. Not sparked, I should say, ignited. Ignited the flames to war. Should probably be in a different notepad. Imagine being that guy, yeah. Imagine looking down on all of us today and saying, damn, dude, my death single-handedly brought the whole world to war. <clears throat> I need to read over this again. I think it was eerily similar to JFK's assassination, too, if I recall correctly. Princip was a group of six uh, assassins, five Serbs and one Bosniak. Oh, and it also involved a lot of different countries, too, if I recall correctly. So five of them were Serbs, one of them was Bosniak, the dude himself, Archduke of Ferdinand of Austria. The car he was driving was, like, I think from Japan or some shit. I don't know. The guns. Nice, easy, easy way. If, we, if he didn't exist, we wouldn't have had World War I. I it's hard to say that for sure. Again, tensions were high at the time, as I seem to recall. What led us to World War? It's hard to say whether or not like this particular individual um, dying was the sole cause of it, um, or if, again, he was just the, ign the ignition. Let's just let's go straight to the source. Did Archduke Ferdinand start World War One? Let's just type need to die for World War One to exist. Or rather, if Archduke Ferdinand didn't die, would World War One exist? These are some interesting searches. Yeah, it's the Casus Belli. World War I was a tragedy with particularly Austrian roots. Sparked by the assassination of the heir to the throne, Archduke Ferdinand. But could the war have been avoided if he had not been killed? Nice. It's a tragedy with particularly Austrian roots. Uh, those are the questions that have been posed at a conference at the Diplomatic Ac uh, Academy in Vienna, uh, in Vienna, which has been training diplomats since 1754. Irrelevant. For at least one person at the conference, the what-if question was personal. Maria Camilla Hasberg, whatever the fuck, a descendant of Austria's former royal family, says the scenario is quite intriguing and would have changed her family's fate. We would have, uh, we would maybe have a different position here in Austria. Maybe we would have more possessions and more responsibility and our functions. However, she says the thoughts of uh, the thought of her royal, royal responsibilities and the lack of personal freedoms um, make her a little uptight. In the way, or, or sorry, and the war, she says, is clearly about far more than just the fate of her own family. World War One was such a dramatic occasion. To look back at the past and ask what went wrong and learn about that is a very important thing. One of the speakers, yep. Ferdinand was the strongest spokesperson for peace in Austria-Hungary. Austria he believed that a war, so he was like a martyr, and his death was like a symbol, I think, because he was advocating for peace, and the black hand killed him. Right? That's kind of the meme I'm gathering right now. Uh, says the assassination re removed this break on going to war. So he was certainly preventing war, and then he 
it's like when a martyr gets killed right is that that's that like that causes everything to go to shit Libo says the assassination of the Archduke removed the break. The Austro-Hungarian Empire itself might not have collapsed if he, if it if it had not gone to war. Um, Holger Herwig from the university posing such what if questions. Hmm. Damn. Maybe he did. Maybe his death literally did cause the war. That's kind of interesting. If someone killed him to start the war, they would have found another way. That see, I want to think that, but I don't know. That's. Because this guy was a strong advocate for peace. So this is the equivalent of like... Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll give you a Dota analogy. This is the equivalent of like everybody on your team wants to flame each other, but you have that one guy that's carrying the game and telling everybody to shut up and just play the game. If that guy dies and starts raging, everything goes to shit, right? If you can just keep that motherfucker alive, you might just win the game and not have to rage at everybody as well. This guy was quelling the quelling the frustrations and tensions is what it sounds like. Yeah, exactly. Well, what I'm saying is that if that guy doesn't die, you don't actually have that that future reality of your entire team going to shit. So, maybe this guy's like, unless you're trying to suggest that like if this guy had lived his natural life out and then died, the consequent the the fate of the I, what what this really asks the question that this really poses is why was there conflict to begin with, and does that conflict supersede the life uh, span of one human individual, right? Like, are these conflicts rooted in the actual geography of the situation? Was there was this like over territory, land? But in the world where there's more than one of those people, it would maybe have been a different domino effect. Mainly, the consequences for Germany after World War One were economic, and they lost a province to France, and taking all the blame for aggression, plus a big hunk of money and military. Yep, exactly. And this was all detailed in the Treaty of Versailles. Let's just get back to that. I think because we, the meme of this question is uh, permanently unsolvable. I think the main argument here is the fact that I came to your stream expecting gameplay. Yeah, King Louie. My bad, dude. We're no longer a Dota streamer. Shadows found that out a little a little while ago. Also, Shadows and Fred to be on Facebook. Fuck him. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Whoa, did he really? I I don't I don't blame him. I was I'm just some random no name on his Facebook feed. I assume he was just doing like a Facebook purge. He's a kill he's a, he's still a chill dude. I still respect you and Shadows very much so. As the, uh, I guess, first people of my new stream. Way, way back. Three years ago. Four years ago? It was a while ago. When you guys found me playing Dota. <clears throat> okay, what were we on? We were on the Treaty of Versailles. We're trying to, like, knowledge hour out here. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Let's mobilize our, our focus into something productive. So, the Treaty of Versailles, as we established, raped the German people. We want to understand how. What exactly was it that the Treaty of Versailles contribute? Like, how did it contribute to the uh, complete fuckery? I know that there were, a, I, I've heard that there were a lot of military restrictions. I want to see exactly where they came from. Negotiations. Talks between the Allies to establish a common negotiating position started on yep, 1919. Initially, 70 delegates, yep, Russia was excluded uh, due to their signing of a separate peace treaty, the Treaty of Brest Lit 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 or whatever the fuck. I don't hear anybody ever complaining about this. Was this a bad treaty that they had to sign? Did this fuck the Russian people and lead them to communism? Not that communism is a bad thing. Um, gameplay tab under following. You would know if you read Mein Kampf. Nice. I don't think so. I don't think Mein Kampf paints, uh, paints the German people in a fair light. It specifically paints one German person that was incredibly radical. And I think he details several times. Does, he talks about the Jewish persecution in Mein Kampf, right? Does Hitler mention Jews and Mein Kampf? He talks about them in a very like weird way, if I recall correctly. The Jews' domination in the states seems so assured that now not only he can uh, he call. It's probably a dicey thing to even read um, on Twitch, but whatever. We have a, 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 a nanimity on Twitch here. Like, we're not, we're not known. We're not a known stream, so we can do this. <clears throat> Communism came from the 19th century. He talked about a lot about the German guilt for World War I. Yeah, I know. I, I thought that was what he mostly talked about. I don't think he really mentioned... Um, It's, it's weird, though, because, like, you can determine this without reading this. 
And also, he doesn't talk about the actual stats as to like how specific, how how hard the German people were getting fucked. Right? My dad's on Twitch, so so he's gonna take you down. If you blow if you blow up because of it, then you get banned for a week. Then blow up. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a win win, right? Either either I get banned for reading part of Mein Kampf and then my stream blows up, or uh, and then I just go to YouTube, or um, I don't get banned and then it's like we got away with you know murder. It's a win win, right? That's the benefits of being a low low tier streamer is every every risk is a is a um every risk is a a gamble in, in in disguise it's a gamble in disguise it's all about how you uh how you treat the live stream fail uh uh reddit reddit exposure fuck mine comp dude i just want to know specifically how the german people were fucked i don't care what hitler says I mean, of course, Hitler was a very prominent figure in World War II, and as as just as well, um, rebuilding rebuilding Germany uh, after World War One. But I want to know what Wiki has to say, not what Hitler has to say, because he wrote it in, when he was in prison, when the German people were still like a suppressed by uh, by their post World War One reparations that they had to pay. Let's look into those. Economy was so weak that only a small percentage of reparations was paid in hard currency. Nonetheless, even the payment. Of this small percentage of the original reparations, 132 billion gold marks, still placed a significant burden on the German economy. Uh, although the causes of the devastating post-war hyperinflation are, compl are complex and disputed, Germans blamed the near collapse of their economy on the treaty, and some ec economists estimated that the reparations accounted for as much as one-third of the hyperinflation. Damn. What's the other two-thirds, though? Yo, why was the German uh, economy in shambles pre prior to World War One? Was it just because they lost? Why was Germany such a prominent figure in World War One too? If it was like Archduke of Ferdinand, it was Austria-Hungary fighting, being small as the shit. You should have seen my last stream. I went way too far. Uh, yikes! That's some mecky shit. These are some yikes questions I'm asking, but it's okay because we're a learning stream and we're just trying to learn, guys. Okay? We can be dumb. We're learning. That's the thing here. We've got to unlock the answer. Germany entered World War One because countries that were um, its allies entered the war first, so they were just the allies. Uh, Germany was eager to go to war, but it did not officially do so until it had a just uh, had had a way to just. Damn, I want to read more of this too. Many historians, this feels like the just the nice kind of thing that we want to read. He did a few things. Mislead there. There is not enough to go around. Gradually increase certain types of descriptive language using similarities to disease and infection of parasites. Yeah, in terms of how Hitler marginalized Jewish people. Uh, maybe there was a powerful empire. Maybe they were a powerful empire. They made an alliance with Austria. Pretty sure Russia attacked. Yeah, that. Declared declared war on Russia. Who said they were allies with Russia? Oh, no. Russia attacked. I see. Russia was on our side in World War One, if I recall correctly, right? It stands to reason that we were against Germany. Russia was on our side. But I don't understand this. The Triple Alliance... Austria, Germany, Italy. This is World War One. I. I thought Italy was on our side. I'm so confused. Russia, France, Britain. We were on this side. The Ottoman Empire was a part of these guys. Oh yeah, that's right. Because Italy flipped. That's right. I completely forgot. Yes, Jews and other types of Jews. Didn't the Russians flip flop a couple times? No, Italy flip flopped. If I recall correctly, Italy was the was the floppers. Italy was the floppers of this one, and then it was Russia after this. Russia in World War Two flipped, flip floppered. I completely forgot about that because Italy flipped. Italy, which was allied with Germany and Austria-Hungary before World War One, was neutral in 1914 before switching to the Allied side in May of 20 1915. Nice meme. Uh, and then there were the bad guys in World War Two. I kind of want to learn more about Mussolini, though. What is this? German entry? Yeah, so Russia attacked, and um, in accordance with its war plan, it ignored Russia and moved first against France, declaring war uh, on August 3rd and sending its main armies through Belgium to attack Paris from the north. I, I kind of I want to see this. Is This is probably dicey shit. Is there footage? I just imagine like people walking through the streets of France with fucking bayonets. I dive. Nah, I'll look this up off stream. I don't know if I'm taking a wrong turn here. Historians have vigorously debated Germany's role. One line of interpretation promoted by German historian Fritz Fischer in the late six, 1960s. I need to change the stream title again. Uh, 
declare war on Germany on August 4th. Most of the main parties were now at war. Uh, Turkey joined the war on Germany's side, becoming part of the central powers. Italy was, was allied. Historians vigorously, one line of it promoted by German, argues that Germany had long desired to dominate Europe politically and economically and seized the opportunity that unexpectedly opened in July 1914. So maybe they had ulterior motives of just wanting to expand. This is imperialism at its finest. Let's highlight this. The British government, ruling over the largest colonial empire, already controlled newly discovered oil in Persia, now Iran, through the Anglo-Persian Oil Company. The war ended the Anglo-German oil partnership, and it exposed the territories of the German-allied Ottoman Empire to direct British attack. Wait, what does this have to do with it? You're talking about World War II still, right? Anti-fusion? I, just, I was looking into World War I first. World War I. The British government ruled over the... Wait. I'm confused. The war ended the Anglo... Are you saying the British government, like, hit a gold mine with oil, and Germany was like, we want part of that? That's why. That's where this imperialism came from? I'm trying to understand it. They wanted to dominate Europe politically and economically and seize the opportunity that unexpectedly opened in 1914, uh, making her guilty of starting the war. Making her... Germany? <clears throat> Yeah. At the opposite end of the moral spectrum, many historians have argued that the war was in inadvertent, caused by a series of complex accidents that overburdened the long-standing alliance system with its lockstep mobilization system that no one could control. I want to understand that line. There was a partnership between English and Germany, I believe, leading up to this. Boy. Oil. Um, caused by a series of complex accidents that, yeah. A third approach, especially important in recent years, is that Germany saw itself surrounded by increasingly powerful enemies, Russia, France, and Britain, um, who would eventually crush it unless Germany acted defensively with a preemptive strike. Damn. There's some fucking nuance here. Oil partnership in World War One. We ah, uh, the sad fact of reality is that I'm gonna probably have to find myself like taking either looking into the incre incredible nuance of like the mood of the time, or just randomly jumping on one of these trains. I I want to think. Here's what I want to believe. I want to believe it's this first one. Or no, sorry, sorry. Well, I don't even know. We should just look into it before I decide, determine what I want to believe. A lot of conflicts are about oil. Ter I completely agree with that. And that's where I said follow the money at the start of the stream. Well, not the start of the stream. At the start of this big deep dive. Ottoman Empire during World War One. Nice. Is this going to talk about the oil? There's a conflict in the Middle East because of oil. On one side, Britain with their colonial territory and the Ottomans allied with Germany. In fact, wait. Can we look up oil? No. Okay. War with Russia. Ottomans' entrance into the war greatly increased the triple and en en triple entente's military burdens. Mm. Russia had to fight alone on the Caucasus Ka Ka Caucasus campaign, but fought with the United Kingdom on the Persian on the Persian campaign. Ismail, Ishmael, Enver, Pasha set off the Battle of Sari Kamish. With the intention of recapturing Batum and Kars, overrunning Ger Georgia and occupying northwestern Persia in the oil fields, fighting the Russians in the Caucasus, in the Caucasus, in the Caucasus, uh, in the Caucasus, Caucasus. However, the Ottomans lost ground and over one hundred thousand soldiers in a, in a series of battles. Sixty south, sixty thousand Ottoman soldiers died in the winter of nineteen sixteen. Was this the Great Cold Winter? This is the great winner, right? First winner of war. This is why some people call uh, Russia's winners like... What is it? The great front... No. No. What do they call this? This, there's a name for this, I swear. 
General Winter, that's right, refers to the harsh winter climate of Russia as a contributing factor to the military failures of several invasions of Russia. Um, and they've happened all throughout history. Yeah, and this picture, this is a badass picture, by the way. Look at this shit. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, I, I like that picture. I like that characterization. Contributing factor to military defeat. In his study of winter wa uh, warfare in Russia, author Alan Chu concludes that General Winter was a substantial contributing factor, not a decisive one, in the military failures of both Napoleon's and Hitler's invasions of Rus Russia. Uh, wait. What about the winter that we were talking about here? <clears throat> this wasn't Hitler or Napoleon. What the fuck? How are they not retreating but baiting? How they are not retreating but baiting invaders into the cold grasp of winter? They have songs about it in Russia, I think. Yeah. Cool shit, I'll say. As deadly as it is. How do they ignore this? 60,000 Ottoman soldiers died to hypothermia in winter in general. Napoleon, Hitler, same. Well, not even that. Uh, Napoleon Hitler had nothing to do with uh, the Ottoman soldiers that died, but certainly the 60,000 of these motherfuckers dying to the winter plays a significant part, right? Where was it again? Here? 60,000 Ottoman soldiers died in the winter of 1916 uh, to 17 on the Moose Bitlis section of the front. How is this not mentioned in Russian winter playing a part in Napoleon and uh, Hitler's invasion? He notes that Napoleon was already suffering significant attrition before winter, Owing, uh, owing, to, owing to the lack of supplies, disease, desertion, uh, desertions, and casualties of war. Likewise, Hitler's war mocked had already suffered 734,000 ca in casualties and was running low on supplies before the arrival of winter. Why do we care about this? Only half paying attention? Just because uh, I think Wiki's wrong here. <laughs> they don't mention this anywhere, that uh, Ottoman soldiers died in the winter of 1916 and 1917 when they were fighting, fighting Russia on Russian ground, right? And isn't this a part of General Russia? Or General Winter? Do they even mention it? They don't even mention it. Damn. Are we about to, like, edit this page? We'll leave it alone. Whatever. Proof that Wiki is crap? I mean, objectively speaking, right? Uh, this is a significant number of soldiers that died as a part of the, of, uh, the Ottoman Empire's war with Russia. as In World War One. Why do they not mention it anywhere on this article in R Russian Winter? where the discussion is literally about the climate of Russia as a contributing factor to the military failures of several invasions of Russia. How do they neglect that? The Ottoman Empire, how do they actually neglect that? I'm, cu I'm curious. It has to just be incomplete, right? That is an actual just oversight, I assume. And I mean, this isn't necessarily proof that Wiki's crap because it's in one of their articles, they have it mentioned. But how do they not on the very article of Russian winner, since you found this oversight, you're supposed to add it in. How? How do I begin to... Do I just type in... <laughs> I don't want to get banned from Wiki if I mistype... All right. All right, let's fucking give it a shot. Examples. First, we need to uh, edit this, right? Where it says Napoleon and Hitler's. Let's edit this. I don't even know... Of both... Of all three... Invasions. I, dude, I don't fucking trust myself to do this. Does somebody know how to like, what's the shit here? <laughs> do I really need to take this moral responsibility upon myself? Can't I just tell you guys and then one of you guys that actually knows how to use Wikipedia like changes? This is an oversight, right? 60,000 Ottoman soldiers died in the winter of 1916 to 1917 on the moose bitless uh, section of the front. Ottomans preferred to keep the Caucasus military silently as they had to regroup. These people lost their lives presumably to the winner. I don't know how Russians winner how how Russia's winner does not play a far, uh, factor in this. Double by the way because it's League of Legends. By the way, I literally posted my Twitch stream into an article and got a slap on the wrist. By the way, wait, what? You posted your Twitch stream into an article and Wikipedia is already terrible. You don't have to make it worse, dude. Well, you're probably right that I would make it worse, but Wikipedia is pretty fucking sick. Okay, I trust them on most things. Encyclopedia, my lad. Napoleon actually made it to Moscow, but already lost half his army and the city was empty with no su supplies or food. <clears throat> I didn't see anything. We were playing Dota at the time. Okay, what? Well, fuck it, dude. We'll just ignore it, okay? Who cares? Russian winner. 
general russia general winner i mean cool shit a lot of ottomans died to the winner presumably uh 197 in the first half of 1918 was the time for nego negotiations ottomans prefer to keep yeah hold up do i still play dota not really how did you find me four years Uh, on the 5th of December 1917, the arm, uh, armistice of Erzing Khan signed between the Russians and Ottomans in Erzing Khan that ended the armed conflict between conflicts between Russia and Ottoman Empire. On the 3rd of March, the Grand Vizier Talat Pasha signed the Treaty of Brest Litov Litovsk with the Russian SFSR. It stipulated that Bolshevik Russia can uh, cede I, that they give up bottom and cars and Ardahan. In addition to these provisions, a secret clause was inserted, which obligated the Russians to demobilize Armenian force, national forces. This led to the Armenian Genocide? No? Or probably had nothing to do with it, and maybe I should just shut my mouth? Did it? What? Am I right here? A secret clause which inserted which obligated the, uh, the Russians to demobilize Armenian national forces. And the Ottoman Empire was the people that genocided these people. What the fuck? This was in 1915 as well. What the fuck? It's all linked, boys. They also deny it? I'm aware of that. When you say they, who do you mean they? Ottomans aren't around anymore, right? You're talking about, talking about Russians? You're talking about... Uh, fuck, who is it? It's not the Armenians, it's uh, the Turkish, right? Affirmed that scholarly evidence revealed young Turk government of the uh, Ottoman Empire began a systematic genocide of its Armenian citizens, an unarmed Christian minority population. More than a million Americans, uh, or sorry, Armenians were exterminated through direct killing, starvation, torture, and forced death marches. Turks, you say. Young Turks made pan-Islamist Islamism and Turkish nationalism work together for their ends. The genocide caused the nationalist force. Uh, they lived in peace before that, pretty sure. They are historically from that area and one of the first Christian nations. Caused the nationalist force. Of what? Nationalist faction? This is not what we're looking... Oh, is it? I'm not saying it. What do you mean? When you say the nationalist force, is this about something specific? I'm out for today. Gotta wake up early and get ready for a six hour train ride with five hour changes. Yeah, it sucks. See you on Monday. Hey, do Serino. The Turkish, you have a good one. Uh, I'll see you on Monday as well. I, um, as you are aware, do not stream tomorrow. Uh, actually, I will. I will stream very briefly tomorrow uh, for Puff Shake. Puff Shake is having a. Puff Shake and I are having a debate over a movie. I encourage you to tune in tomorrow. It will be. The movie itself will be fuck. What the fuck is happening? Um, well, anyways, him and I are having a debate on a movie, and it is going to be Gravity. Gravity is the movie that we will be debating. I remember the movie being shit. Um, he thinks it's great, so we'll have a debate on that. That'll be great. Why is What's with the formatting here? Why is Twitch garbage right now? <clears throat> okay, it's less shit. Oh, he's alive right now. Sick. Reviewing the climate town hall. Nice stream. Anyways. Uh, terminology. Young Turk government of the Ottoman Empire began a systematic genocide of its Armenian citizens, unarmed Christian minority population. More than a million Armenians were exterminated through that... The IAGS also condemned Turkish attempts to deny the factual and morality or moral reality of the army. Why did this happen? Somebody, anybody in chat? I'm saying the genocide obviously caused them to, uh, them to migrate and to group up and fight together. Many fought for Russia. I see. Hey, do Serena, to Turkish, you have a good one. I can't slash won't watch. I'm visiting good friends, so I'll be busy. No, you're fine. Don't worry about that. Uh...
was the ruthless slaughter of millions of Armenians by the Turks of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, in 1915, during World War I, leaders of the Turkish government set in motion a plan to expel and massacre Americans. By the early 1920s, when the massacres and deportations finally ended, between 600,000 and 1.5 million Armenians were dead, with many more forcibly removed from this country, from the country. Today, most historians call this event a genocide, a premeditated and system, yeah, yeah. the roots, Arme Ottoman Empire. And again, as, we, as we've established, right, some of this might even take place World War I, boys. Armenian people have made their home in the cock and the Caucasus. I'm done with that. Caucasus. Why do they always have this dumb intro? Like, why does it take us six minutes or six seconds to get into this Caucasus? Right. Caucasus. 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 Easy. Where was it? Fuck. And then we lose our place because we didn't highlight. Made their home in the Caucasus, re or Caucasus region of Eurasia for some 3,000 years. For some of that uh, of that time, the Kingdom of Armenia was an independent entity. At the beginning of the 4th century, for instance, it became the first nation in the world to make Christianity its official religion. But for the most part, control of the region shifted from one empire to another. During the 15th century, uh, Armenia was absorbed into the mighty Ottoman Empire. Caucasus. I think it's Caucasus. The Ottoman rulers, uh, like most of their subjects, were Muslim. They permit they permitted wait, oh yeah, they permitted religious minorities like the Armenians to maintain some autonomy, but they also subjected Ar subjected Armenians who they viewed as infidels to unequal and unjust treatment. Christians had to pay higher. Oh, I heard about this shit. Yeah, higher taxes, few political rights and legal rights. They were like second class citizens. They were absolutely second class citizens. No, no dispute about that. In spite of these obstacles, the Armenian community thrived under Turkish or under Ottoman rule. Well, Turkish rule, right? They tend to be better educated and wealthier than the Turk than their Turkish neighbors, who in turn grew to resent their success. This is kind of weird coloring here. Um, this resentment was compounded by suspicions that the Christian Armenians would be more loyal to Christian governments, uh, that of the Russians, for example, who shared an unstable border with Turkey, than they were for the uh, Ottoman Caliphate. Uh, these suspicions grew more acute as the because uh because as we already established the ottomans were not big fans of russians either right like at all <laughs> they were sitting on an oil landmine and russia wanted some of that shit is that i we understood that correctly there's a good movie on this but it's a romance fuck that there's they were a religious minority ottoman was uh muslim and the term genocide actually was invented be oh shit interesting genocide i could look that up but I, i'll just take your word for it Again, I just want to understand this too. Um, why did the Ottoman conflict begin with Russia? It's all about oil. Much of history, uh, much of uh, historical wars have been fought over resources, specifically oil, if I recall correctly. Uh, recapturing bottom and yeah, it's, it's it's land and in this case oil. Overrunning Georgia and occupying northwestern Persia in the oil fields. Fighting the Russians in the, Ca in the Caucasus, <clears throat> however, the Ottomans lost ground in over 100,000 soldiers in a series of battles. 60,000 Ottoman soldiers died in the winter of 1916. Uh, Ottomans preferred to keep that. Yeah, I, I really do think this should be considered General Russia, right? Or General Winter. Preferred to keep the Caucasus. We already read this. I was reading this again. Reserves to take Baghdad and Palestine. Palestine. From the British, I didn't even know the British owned those places. That's at at, at, a, at a point in history. 1917 and the first half of 1918 was the time for negotiations. The armistice, armistice of Erzincan. The war took place. The wars took place in 19 in 1676 to 81, um, 1687, 16. Yeah, you can say the Ottomans have had history with Russia. What the fuck, Luma? Hey, dude, learning stream, boys. Learning, learn. Hey, learning. We're learning, dude. Chill. Okay, we're learning, man. I didn't know about... I mean, I probably did at some point know about this shit, but it's all... It's all left my brain. This is... This is the American education system at its finest, my Italian friend. I'm just kidding. We're learning, okay? And really, I should be taking notes. So, fuck this for a second. Ottoman Empire. What were we on? What do we want to write down for this? I guess, um, 
many conflicts with Russia. I knew the previously fought, but not the... I knew they previously thought, but not to that extent. Oh, I see. You're you're expressing the same sort of um, amazement. Is you looked that up and you were like, "Damn, I knew that the Ottomans have history with Russia, but what the fuck?" You could say that they have history with Russia. Um, Ottoman Russia wars, I guess. Yeah, fuck it. Let's look this up. History of the Rus Russo Turkish wars. So. Ottoman Empire, these people are considered Turkish, right? I, and firstly, this is no longer a thing. Historically known uh, in the Eastern world as Rome, is the Turkish Empire, or simply Turkey. This is no longer a thing, right? Is the Ottoman Empire still around? It's modern day Turkey, as, as I understand it. There is no empire. Ended in 1922, right when, well, not right when, but. Um, Certainly, towards the end of this war, negotiations were happening. What took these guys out again? It wasn't this. <clears throat> I think they were just incredibly behind, is what I seem to recall. Like in technology and advancements in their economy. That's what I remember. Uh, that's very vague statements, I know. Decline. Starting in the 1600s, the Ottoman Empire began to lose its economic and military dominance to Europe. Around this time, Europe had strengthened rapidly with the Renaissance and the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. Other factors, no, excuse me, such as poor leadership and having to compete with trade from the Americas and India led to the weakening of the empire. So, yep, certainly something economic. And then in this, uh, what the fuck? Why are we so far back? This is just their decline. Um, all right, whatever. Uh, Ottoman Turks were defeated at the battle. Yeah, they were just. I remember they also just kept hemorrhaging wars. Uh, defeated uh, at the Battle of Vienna, this loss added to the already waning status. Over the next hundred years, the empire began to lose key regions of land. After a revolt, Greece won their independence from the Ottoman Empire. In 1878, the Congress of Berlin declared the independence of Roman, Romania, Serbia, and Bulger, uh, Bulgaria from the Ottoman Empire. During the Balkan Wars, which took place in 1912 to 1913, the Ottoman Empire lost nearly all their territories in Europe. I did my own research on unethical human research during World War II, and it's pretty messed up. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. There's a lot of bullshit things that came out of that. Uh, mostly, like, eugenic ju eugenics justification, as I seem to recall, and, like, horrible human experiments caused, or, sorry, not caused, uh, done, or committed, or um, executed, if you will, on, uh, on Jewish people, and not Jewish people, like, gypsies, commies, just ter horrible things. Uh, when did the Ottoman Empire fall? At the start of the war of World War I, the Ottoman Empire was already in decline. The Ottoman Turks entered the war in 1914 on the side of the Central Powers and were defeated in 1918. Under a treaty agreement, uh, most Ottoman territories were divided between Britain, France, Greece, and... They were just literally split up. That's hilarious. Wait, I'm so confused. That was part of the negotiations? I feel like this is also being left out. Read this. War with Russia, right? 1917, the first, half, uh, first half of 1918 was the time for negotiations. Yeah, negotiations, no, negotiations of your literal country. On the fifth, and wait, hold up. Who caused, who did the Armenian genocide? It couldn't have been the Ottoman Empire. They were gone by then, right? According to this, officially ended in 1922 when the title of Ottoman Sultan was eliminated. Turkey was declared a republic in, in 1923. When was this again? 1915 during oh it was during World War One. What? How do they genocide their own people? What? I don't understand. You're in a fucking war with Russia. How are you killing your own people as well? Can somebody explain this shit to me? Why? Why would they do that? Leaders of the Turkish government set in motion a plan to expel and massacre Armenians by the early 1920s. I don't understand. I guess you could say this is tantamount to like Hitler killing Jews while we were invading Nazi Nazi Germany. But like, what the fuck? I don't know, man. So during the war, they were killing their own people. Damn. I guess they wouldn't say they were their own people. That's some brutal shit, man. Also, some completely f f f fucked shit, too. Like, uh, like makes no sense fucked shit. Not just fucked as in, like, morally. Okay. Do we wrap this up soon? Uh, I feel some of the fire.
kind of burning down. Some of the passion is dying. We've covered a lot of topics. I don't know. I've done a very poor job taking notes. Here's a good one, though. Ottoman Empire. Many conflicts with Russia. Many conflicts in general. Mostly lost all of them. Uh, also genocided. Armenians. During World War One. Specifically around when? 1914 was when it started? Or no, far, sorry. 1920s, 1915, during World War I, leaders of Turkey set in motion a plan to expel and massacre Armenians. Nazis in South America continued experiments after the war in South America? New crops, they guys. And the genocide wasn't just Armenians. There were uh, Assyrians and Orthodox Greeks killed. There were Assyrians and Orthodox Greeks killed. Not in the millions, but hundreds of thousands. Yeah. It wasn't just the Armenians. I'm so confused. So, Chilean Argy. So, okay. Again, dumb stream, right? I'm totally fine admitting this, okay? I'm incredibly ignorant. There were Armenians in... Armenia, right? That's a country, just to be clear. Again, stupid stream. We don't we don't know things, but that's fine. Armenia. It is a country in Europe, okay? Very key key to note that. So there were Armenians in Armenia, right, that were uh that got assimilated into the Jesus wire. Chill, Jim Jams. You just got here, okay? I don't want to hear it. Um uh this country was uh, assimilated by the Turkish Empire, aka the Ottoman Empire, correct? Yep, came under rule of the uh, Ottoman and Iranian empires, right? So came under rule. They're still still where they are, right? And then their people start getting genocided. Also, on the complete other end of the world, you're telling me that uh, there were Nazis in South America as well as Armenians that were genocided. I mean, I wasn't sure either. Why would my brain need to know about Armenia? Exactly, yeah. yeah that's our justification for being dumb, right? So why, why do I need to know about these things? But we want to know about these things. So that's why we do the research. Anybody coming into chat to shame me for this shit, you can just fuck right off, okay? We're not about we're not about that kind of shit. Shaming somebody for the knowledge they have in their brain, that's fucked, okay? Because knowledge can expand, knowledge can attract, can, can can contract. Okay? Don't call people stupid. They weren't Nazis back then though. But one one XX is saying they were. Historically they were an empire, but didn't have their own land and were given it after World War II. I thought they did. I thought we established in this article. No. <clears throat> Where was it? In this article that they were, they did have their own land that got assimilated by the Ottoman Empire. In fact, I was going to type that down in the notes. Where was it? Ottoman Empire's systemic... Uh, systematic extermination of 700 to 1.5 million Armenians, mostly citizens of the Ottoman Empire. The starting date is conventionally uh, 1915, but it happened... Uh, wait, this wasn't the right article. This is the right article, if I recall correctly. The Roots, right? Um, made their home in the Caucasus region uh, of Eurasia for some 3,000 years, right? They're chilling. Then it was around the 15th century that they got absorbed. Absorbed. If historically, they were an empire, but didn't have their own land uh, given after World War II. I'm saying in, uh, in uh, after World War II. After World War One. Okay. Okay. So they had their own land. It got taken from them in the 15th century, correct? And then for pretty much, again, f like 400 years, they didn't have their own land until they got it, uh, got it back, so to speak. Got it back, right? They got it back. Because current day Armenia is where previous day Armenia was, presumably, with, of course, some variations, I'm going to assume, and where the district lines were drawn, uh, given the fact that it was a 400-year gap between when it was uh, independent and where it is now. <clears throat> between the 16th and 19th centuries, the traditional Armenian homeland, composed of Eastern and Western Armenia, came under the rule... Yep, repeat it. Nice, I was right. It seems like. While most of the western parts of the traditional Armenian homeland remained under Ottoman war or Ottoman rule during World War One, Armenians living in their ancestral lands uh, were system uh, systematically exterminated in the Armenian Genocide. 1918, following the Russian Revolution, all non-Russian countries declared their independence after the Russian Empire ceased to exist, leading to the establishment of the First Republic of Armenia. I see, and this was their own land. You said again, this own, the own land is like the land that they had 
officially known as the time of its existence as the Democratic Republic of Armenia, was the first modern Armenian state since the loss of Armenian statehood in the Middle Ages. Damn. Uh, Republic was established. And again, I just want to be clear. This was where they were, correct? Way back, 400 years ago. Am I correct in this? In this assumption? I'm just going to judge land masses here. This is a smaller version of this, I'm going to assume. Can we look at this? I can't zoom in. Does the does the fucking does this shit line up? What is this? Georgia, Ottoman Empire, Georgia, Persia. Where I don't fucking know. I'm not gonna I can't I can't link this shit up. I'm I'm assuming, okay? I'm gonna assume that this is a smaller piece of the land that they were given originally when they had when they formed the first republic. This is gone this is apparently modern day Armenia. Again, completely uh fucked that these guys got well, we fucked by the um by I don't want to say the Turks by the Ottomans by the Turk oh, let's be real it was the Turkish Empire right it was the fucking Turks <clears throat> I don't really like this guy but Glink did a whole video on this about Anna, Anna Kasparian who is Armenian is not a true Armenian this is some, some weird shit Kasparian and Shank Yuger. If ever it was appropriate to label people as a regressive left. Armenia was part of the Soviet Union later. <laughs> That's kind of funny. That they... <laughs> or is that funny? No, wait. The way I'm understanding history now is Russia was kind of the good guys, uh, as I understand it, to Armenia, right? Insofar as Armenia is concerned, Russia came. I don't. I don't want to say they liberated the Armenian people, but they were. They were down with the Ottoman Empire. Russia was like, "Fuck the Ottoman Empire. Fuck you guys." And uh, the Armenian Empire, the Armenian Empire, the Armenian people stand to benefit from the Ottoman Empire getting silent, uh, getting crushed, right? I don't know if that's a remotely fair characterization. No, Russia, not, I didn't say they were the good guys. I just meant to the Armenian people. I mean, I did say that they were the good guys, but I immediately retracted that afterwards. You heard me. And I'm not even necessarily trying to say that Russia's not the good guys, though. They shared Christian values. Okay. Did they come in and say, hey, like, we like you guys, you know, you're good? I guess I'm just trying to I'm I'm trying to infer the impacts on like I mean they in part gave this land out, right? The land acquisition of the First Republic of the Armenian Empire of Ar of Armenia, sorry. I shouldn't say empire. Was this given by Russia? Established in the Armenian populated territories of the disintegrated Russian Empire known as Eastern Armenia or Russian Armenia. I as I assume this land was given to them by the Russians. Offensive during World War One, and subsequent occupation and creation of a provisional administrative government gave hope for ending Ottoman uh, Ottoman Turkish rule in Western Armenia, with the help of several battalions of Armenian uh, Armenians recruited from the Russian Empire. Hmm. The Russian army made progress on the on the Caucasus front, uh, advancing. The Russians continued to make considerable advances even after toppling uh, the toppling of Tsar Nicholas II, Nicholas II. Sorry, um, towards independence. So when they fell. Well, when they were on their falling, the Ottoman Empire as in, and the trans uh, Caucasian Commissariat signed the Armistice of Ezrinkin, ending armed conflict. After the Bolshevik, excuse me, seizure of power, a multinational congr con Congress of trans, trans Caucasian, fuck, trans Caucasian? Uh, representatives meant to create a provisional regional, regional executive body known as the Trans Caucasian. I think that's just Caucasian, right? Trans Caucasian Sime. The, commissar the commissariat and the Sime were heavily encumbered by the pretense that the South Caucasus uh, formed an integral unit of non existent Russian democracy. The Ar Armenian de deputies in the Sime were hopeful that the anti Bolshevik forces in Russia would prevail in the Russian Civil War. Um, yeah, and rejected any idea of separating from Russia. If you want to learn more, the miniseries World War II in color is a nice source of reliable knowledge, at least better than Wiki. Can't help with World War One though. Damn. Well, I do appreciate that. Is it is it overly colored? Because I'm just trying to get um, like objective sources here. When I say colored, I mean like is it um. Am I going to find like myself believing certain things that are, we'll say, factually uh, un unverifiable if I watch it? Solving the Middle East solution. 
with the zero state Middle East with the zero state solution. This guy's videos are funny. I wonder what he's up. It would be an understatement to say that the situation in the Middle East is complicated. I'll be the first to say that <coughs> I don't know everything that I could about the conflict. There's a lot to process and a lot of different ways that you can interpret what is happening. The issue is roughly as follows. Someone will mention the Middle East, and then all of a sudden, everybody will be yelling about Israel this, Palestine that, and dinner's ruined. It does not seem like there's a likely end to this conflict in sight, which means we're going to have to keep hearing about this shit for years. Some have proposed a two-state solution, but it doesn't seem likely that a acceptable compromise between the two parties will ever be made. We can all agree that a two-state solution would be nice, but is ultimately unfeasible. And a one-state solution will also never happen. That's why I propose a zero-state solution in which we nuke the Middle East. <laughs> it's better like this. How can there be conflict in the Middle East if there is no Middle East? And as an anti-centrist, this excites me because finally the East will have no middle. Just a left and a right is all things should be. Now hold on, hold Nice name. Alright. Comedic value. Biasat history? Biasat history? The European pay television. Oh, nice. Okay. I want to watch Boss. Bosh, sorry. It's mostly about the order in which the different things happened. You got to know the basics before you can doubt the winning te uh, team side of things. I agree with you there. Um, and again, I, I want to think that my world, my world history knowledge has carried me at least a little bit, but uh, I am certainly very unknowledgeable on these topics. So I will concede to you. What's it called? The World War, World War II in color. We'll look it up. We'll watch it. Tomorrow, guys, I have a uh, debate with uh, Puff Shake on Gravity, the movie. Um, I will watch it tonight and uh, formulate my opinions and um, uh, reconvene with uh, Puff Shake tomorrow. I will stream it. He will probably stream it. I encourage you, of course, to watch his stream if you're um, not already watching it. He's a great guy. Uh yeah i can't say too much otherwise you're gonna think that i'm like straight shilling for him so um you know certainly go formulate your own opinion of him but i think he's a great guy i think he's still streaming right now and i think we're gonna rate him because i tried to rate him yesterday and it didn't really work so um that's gonna do it for me i really appreciate anybody that watched my stream today of course make sure to follow if you are not already we uh watch at least uh, a fair amount of news and critique it as well as uh dive deep dive into a new uh sorry deep dive into history whenever we can um i'm pretty left-leaning though i won't lie when we're doing the new stuff if you're not a huge fan of like left-leaning politics maybe just peace out but i always try to look into history as well because i think it's very interesting subjects anyways i loved you all and i still do uh but i'll catch you guys later okay peace out